Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of the Inside EgoSoft podcast. I'm recording this episode on Thursday, June 17th, 2021. And boy, oh boy, it's been a week. <laughs> Let me give you a quick summary on the latest before we jump into this episode's chat. So most importantly, we've started the first beta of the upcoming 4.10 update for X4 Foundations this week. As we've mentioned in previous episodes of the Inside Egosoft podcast, 4.10 will introduce two bigger new features, the multiverse team seasons and the custom game start. However, neither of these two is included in the first version of the 4.10 beta. They will be added to later beta versions. That's a fairly normal thing for us. If you've participated in previous beta tests, you know this. We're adding and changing things during the beta test and thus release new beta versions uh, more or less regularly. Now, not having those two big new features at the start of the 4.10 beta doesn't mean that its changelog isn't impressive though. In response to your feedback on the 4.0 update, we have fixed, um, among other things, various issues associated with mining, trading, and station management. Another improvement we have made is to our graphic engine's asset management in X4 Foundations, which should result in better use of graphics memory and help with things like asteroids popping in. If you're interested in seeing all the other things that we've been working on for 4.10, please uh, do check the full change log, which you can find on the news section of the X4 Steam page or our forum at forum.egosoft.com. And if it's the first time you hear about these two new upcoming features, make sure to listen to the previous episodes of the Inside Egosoft podcast. Now, if you want to participate in the beta and haven't participated in previous betas, first off, please head to our forums and carefully read the section about the risks and rules involved with participating in the beta. In that same subforum, you will find the necessary practical instructions for participating. I'm going to add a link to the show notes, so please click that if you want to find out more about the whole topic. If you decide to participate, First off, thank you, <laughs> but please make sure that you share your feedback in the public beta feedback forum on forum.egosoft.com. That's the spot that the team is watching and reacting to. Alrighty, the second big news of this week is connected to this episode's guest. I've invited uh, Ketra for a chat and here we go. Okay, hi Ket. Welcome to the Inside Egos of Podcast to our episode three. Yes, hello. Nice to have you. Um, for our audience who have probably already seen your name in our forums or in some of the news about X3 Farnham's legacy, um, can you quickly introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do at EgoSoft? And of course, most importantly, what has been your first X game? Ah, right. So yes, most people will know me from being moderator and general DevNet collaborator and moder on the X forums mm -hmm. over what feels like a, a lifetime ago. <laughs> My first X game would be X Beyond the Frontier, which was back in uh, 2000s for me. Mm -hmm. I work at Egosoft uh, about a year now, mainly I do support tasks and uh, try to pester people and help with uh, ideas uh, mm -hmm. and various smaller things. Uh, still, I'm hoping in the future to be more proactive once this project is over. Right. And the project that you uh, name as X3 Farnham's Legacy. Right. That's the main reason why I have invited you over, Kat, is um, because you've been involved in this project in a big way. Now, if any of our listeners have completely missed this whole thing. Um, can you tell the audience what X3 Farnham's Legacy is? Yes, um, X3 Farnham's Legacy is a community-based project Yeah, that is basically an expansion to X3 Albion Prelude Terran Conflict kind of 
a mixed pack of autos and uh, yeah it iterates on the existing x3 engine and we uh, yeah we expanded several existing features and added a few a few more to mm -hmm. experiment a bit based on some ideas we had from mods and in general from the community so but it's 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 something that people start anew right like it's not it's not something where they load their old safe game in from albion prelude or something like that but rather they start a new game with this yes basically it's the same style as albion prelude already was in comparison to as it was an expansion to terran conflict but right. you would have to start again so uh, i coined well someone coined this phrase expand alone <laughs> which was uh, yeah uh, an odd way to mix both things that uh, yeah explain the thing that you it's it is an expansion because it uses assets and uh, yeah. stuff from previous games but you have to start it's like a new game okay got it and um probably the best thing like apart from all the cool content of course what makes it a very easy to decision to look into it is that it's uh, available for free yes i guess that helps uh, <laughs> it does the hurt yeah <laughs> a bit <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we um, we decided to put it out for free because it is this this uh, community project or this this project that has been developed by these very motivated community members, and in the end, we decided to add a donation pack to it on both Steam and GOG, and the donations that come in through that will be forwarded by Egosoft to Médecins Sans Frontières to Doctors Without Borders. And um, we just announced today about that the 1.2 update is available and also that in that turn, we have made the first donation of 2,500 euros to Médecins Sans Frontières. So thanks to everybody who already bought that. And you can still do that, of course, um, until the end of August, I think, as I wrote into the news. But of course, if you want to, you can also donate straight away on their website um, without going through Steam and GOG. Anyway, now I'm, I've got a little sidetracked. This whole project started around five years ago, right? Yes, the first pitch of uh, should we do something like this was around uh, early 2016, so I think even January. People, when they hear five years, they think, wow, well, uh, five years. But projects like this obviously have some... Uh, downtimes uh, so that are it's not like we worked every day for five years on this but mm. uh, yeah there were some more and less active periods depending on real life and, and stuff sure. like that but yeah five years is about accurate take me back to that moment like when you say you pitched it who pitched what to whom exactly <laughs> and then yeah. how like was it a forum post or was it an email to to somebody at egosoft or it's a it's a funny story because it's a mixture of several things coming together. Mm -hmm. Being I was always very active in in trying to find pitching new ideas, even to Egosoft to include in the games themselves. We had ideas forums, and one of the good things about being a motor is that you can you know experiment and maybe you come up with an idea. So you you pitch ideas then. Also, maybe some ideas are pitched to you from, from users and from, from community members. And I, I think also, in general, there was always this lingering idea that we should do, well, Egosoft should do something based on X3 again, even though development on X4 was already undergoing. And so the culmination of all these things, uh, several conversations, several pitches, let's say, led to that we said okay a core idea we had mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was said okay this this sounds interesting so let's go and then we passed a few people like julian and, and matt uh, lucas and other community members that if they wanted to participate if they want to join with ideas or collaborate and then we just started collecting a huge amount of of ideas first uh, and once we had all these collected then we started to filter them out what is feasible what is not feasible to do how much can we do on our, on our own because again some things you would require more effort from people that have access to various parts of the game mm -hmm. and yeah so once that structure was done then we just went on and started to implement the those ideas as we, as we went along and and when you when you pitched it what was the let's say like the very summarized reason why you wanted to do it like with what basic idea did you did you go into that pitch yes the basic idea is always trying to reinvent ways to play the same game mm -hmm. so basically 
the idea was how do we, we can do a fresh take on an existing franchise like that, like the X3 games. So yeah, the main first pitch was to take the, the whole concept and turn it on its head. So you have to think uh, many of these people have played hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of Terran Conflict or Albion Prelude already. So <laughs> why would why would I want to start a, a new game and do the, the same thing? So, that was the main idea. So how, how do we make this somewhat, somewhat fresh? How What features can we add that could be sensible to, to give people a new a new experience into a familiar setting? And let's say somebody who's listening right now hasn't downloaded and played it yet. What's the the number one reason why they should? Like what's, what's your number one favorite thing that you did differently or did that makes it um, super attractive to play Farnham's Legacy? Right. Uh, those are two questions. <laughs> One question is what I want and what I like, and this will not probably not be the main thing I already know from, from the forums. The one I'm most proud and I'm the most interested in is the diplomacy stuff uh, with the dynamic relations, with the, with the agents, with, mm -hmm. with giving player abilities to interact with the factions without having to result into action because the game already has a lot of action so for me it was important that we have a, something that allows players to be more still active and have impact in things but in a different way okay um obviously this this is this is again this is for me because it was an interesting new idea but it is an intrusive uh, system especially the dynamic relations which a lot of players uh, on the forums disagree on the level of impact it should have but mm -hmm. it's an it's an x game so we will never have complete agreement on anything. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but I understand people's take on it. And we, again, now looking back, we could obviously make different things or um, even iterate better on it. But uh, I'm still very proud of uh, how much it changes the game dynamics. And uh, if people are prepared to live with these consequences, I think it will take the most new approach to an X game. So this, this one will disrupt this a bit and hopefully give them a new playing experience. I'm talking to you now about this project, but um, you already mentioned some names earlier of, of other people that were involved, of course. Would you like to shout out some, some names of the other team members and say a few words about what they did in the project? Yeah, sure. Um, I have to shout out Matt or Psycho, as mo most people will know him on the forums. And he did the brunt of the work because he's the only one that has, from the community side, uh, access to KC, which allows to make changes to the game that scripters or uh, modders like me normally would not have access to. So the mm -hmm. whole diplomacy thing is a, an idea that I had, but without Matt's help, I would never be able to implement it the way how complex it is now. So great shout out to him also because of his work on opening up the game to, to modding. He introduced a huge amount of new features that probably most people never will see unless they are interested in modding because <laughs> yeah, that's just him. And Julian, obviously, he wrote the, the stories, especially the, the phase one and phase two stories. He's the, the, the text person. He's, he writes good texts and, and good stories. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he was crucial for us to have a consistent narrative through, throughout, the, especially the first plot. Yeah, then we had other collaboration with Adia. I, said, I mentioned Lucas, for example. He had a few ideas and we brainstormed a lot of, the, for example, the <laughs> random um, uh, sector management that uh, we wanted to do. Uh, so we had uh, quite a lot of uh, back and forth ideas with him. We had some assets from, uh, from Alex Vanderbilt. Uh, so we have some new sector backgrounds and some, some suns and, and planets that, you know, make things also a bit fresher from the looks. And we had uh, some help from uh, Ecosoft people like Marcus, uh, who made a Terran ship for us. Lino uh, gave us uh, some assets as well, the player HQ being the most important one and uh, some uh, a reward ship, which I won't spoil for those that don't have played stuff yet. Mm -hmm. Klaus obviously helped us a lot, uh, especially in uh, releasing uh, things and preparing all the XA stuff. He was quite a lot of help. CBJ, I have to uh, shout out because he was patient enough to coordinate this madness over the <laughs> uh, the years. Yeah, there's probably more people that I'm blanking now, but yeah, that's the ones I can remember the most. Cool, cool. 
now that 1.2 is out and um, we put into the news today that it's the end of the project, how are you feeling now? Like looking back on the years of putting it together and then of course also the one and a half months now after the release. Yes, it's a um, mixed feelings, I guess. I, I'm not I'm sad to say I'm relieved it's done. Mm. Five years having this in the back of your head starts to weigh on, on you. So that part is a good thing that it's over and we can you know, give it to the masses and lean back a bit. The other side is um, it's an excellent experience. It's a very special experience I had collaborating with uh, a lot of people I would consider, well, I consider them friends. Yeah, so it, it has this duality about one side, I'm a bit sad that this, this ends, uh, but on the other, I'm relieved that we can move on and make, do other things in other places. Yeah, it's, it's such a cool story. I mean, um, me coming into Ubisoft and, you know, hearing from Bernd about the, the projects that I would be working on at the start um, or over the next couple of months and uh, Fun's Legacy already popped up in there. I, I remember that quite well. Hearing about this concept of these guys from the community working on it, you know, for years and years and uh, it's really something special, I think. And, and you can see that in the reactions of, of, of the players too. Like um, the, the comments have been really positive. People are really grateful for this project. And, and I think, yeah, you, you guys can, can be really proud about what you did there. Yes, uh, I'm very proud. I'm also very uh, happy that people enjoy it. Again, there will be some disagreements on, on specifics, but... <laughs> sure, there's we always... Have a, we have... Yeah. We have a, an active uh, modding community. I hope some people will find inspirations. You know, who knows? Maybe in a few few months, some people decide to create content for that. So, and we keep this alive from that side, uh, but in a less official capacity than. Right. But uh, but still, it's it's open for for that. So it's not an an end end, but it's an end on an official basis. Um, now, in today's announcement, we um, emphasized as well that we still want to make a Linux version of the game. But I guess we can't say anything specific about when that will be available, right? Yes, we should not do that because uh, it's on hands of people that are very busy. So uh, it's it's planned and we are here, the Linux crowd, and they are not forgotten. And yeah, but the best we can say is as soon as possible. Right. Okay. Kat, I have a couple more personal questions that I always meant to ask you. <laughs> so now I'm just doing it using this podcast format. Um, you have this, this charming Swiss accent, yet I know that you live in Portugal. What's the story behind that? How did that come about? So I am Portuguese. I'm a Portuguese person. I, I was born in Portugal uh, from Portuguese parents that moved to Switzerland in the late 70s. Okay. I grew up in Switzerland most of my life. So this very strong Zurich accent keeps popping up in Germanic languages. <laughs> <laughs> so so every time any language has some resemblance to Germanic, the Swiss accent pops up and says, here I am, I'm the boss. <laughs> and uh, so, so you decided at some point that you wanted to go see that other side of yours, experience it for yourself or? The longing to go home is, is strong because also my parents were always adamant that, you know, we are here, you know, for as short as possible to get our lives somewhat improved. And then the moment we can, we move out and they did. And then a few years later, when, when I was then alone, uh, yeah, the longing to to your homeland uh, starts to kick in and yeah. So yeah, and the weather here is much better. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I can imagine, but unfortunately I've, I've never been to Portugal myself yet. Yeah. Um, if, if I were to ask you what's the what's the coolest or the best thing about Portugal? Yeah, the weather is sure usually the one that, that, that yeah. can say we have probably the most sun uh, hours per year that I think most European countries. Yeah. Yes, very chill country. Yeah. For me, obviously, it's different because, again, this is, I am at home here and there are right. many things that are not so good. But you can, if it's your home, it's, you can live with the, with the faults. But yeah, the weather and people is the, and this chill nature of, you know, yes, stuff happens, but, you know, 
let's not get too worked up about it. So the, that's the thing <laughs> I think I like the most. Even though again, I'm I'm very Swiss in that in that in that area, which irks me then when <laughs> that things are not <laughs> as organized as they should be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, right. Yeah, it's weird. But yeah. Again, coming to the to the touristy part, like if if you would have to tell me what I, what should I what should I do for my first Portugal trip? Where should I go? Yeah. Um, what what cities should I see? Well, all of them. <laughs> so if you like beaches and and you just all you want to do is sit in a, on a towel all day, and by all means go to the Algarve where everyone else goes. If you like culture and architecture, then I would suggest Lisbon, Porto, Braga, Guimarães, which are in the north a bit more. But yeah, but the country is very diverse, even though it's a very small country, but it's very diverse even in, uh, in culture because of all the different uh, invasions and, and occupations over the centuries. Right. Uh, food is... So if you, if you are on a diet, don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Best only come when you... You can eat uh, because that will food will also be a thing because there is a lot of them and also very good. Nice. Okay, now I just have to find the contact of the Portuguese tourism ministry or something so that they. Well, just ring me up and uh, this we will we'll organize something. So oh, I'll, ha I'll have them sponsor this podcast. <laughs> that's what <laughs> oh, I mean. Right. Ah, okay. Ah, that's uh, that's sneaky way to do it. <laughs> Now let's let's go from the from the Portuguese seafood um, back to to gaming, but more on a general on a general basis. If you're not playing yourself X3 or X4, what are you what are you playing these days? What are you spending your gaming time with? Uh, like mo movies, I, I'll play pretty much anything that doesn't have zombies. <laughs> I'm not a very fan of zombies, so I play pretty much anything I like. Strategy games, RPGs, so. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Stellaris with some friends. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, RimWorld, for, uh, also we are, we are playing a, rim, a mod, a multiplayer mod on RimWorld. We, we like for the shenanigans. Um, I got Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey the, the other day, which I'm playing mm -hmm. a bit, which is fun. But I usually, uh, if I see something that is interesting, I, I'll have a look at least and you know give it a go because I'll... Again, if you only buy the games you think you like, you will miss out on a few gems. Right. But yeah, I would play uh, pretty much anything. If it catches my eye, I will I will give it a go. Uh, I like a lot of puzzle games. Yeah, strategy games are probably my preference. But I will play survival games, for example. Valhalla is uh, very popular these days. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, even though it's, again, it's not my main genre, but I still find it interesting for the game mechanics. And uh, yeah, uh, I just like to have a look and uh, see how the game works. And the, the, the zombie thing, is that something that is restricted to games or, or also to movies or in, in books and any other format of entertainment? Yeah, I, I like thrillers. I don't like horror movies, for example. Uh -huh, okay. I, uh, I like interesting uh, thrillers. Uh, for example, I was just watching uh, A Quiet Place 2. And since uh, Quiet Place One was my one of my favorites uh -huh. uh, of the last few years, yeah. So I don't mind. I, I like thrillers, but I don't. I don't just don't like cheap scares and yeah, yeah. I don't mind the one or the other zombie game, but if zombies are just there for the hordes, I don't find them interesting because I liked Half Life and that has some quote unquote zombie stuff in it, but the gameplay is just uh, singular that it's worth it. So generally, rather broad uh, genre yeah. taste, let's say. And but if, if you would have to do like a top five list of the last, I don't know, ten years, twenty years. Oh, uh, what what's definitely not to miss? Oh yeah, 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 that's a hard question because there aren't that many really great games in the last ten years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there are some good ones. Uh, I mean, Mass Effect was probably one of the top ones. Uh, Starcraft Two. Uh, yeah, and then we start to have problems. To, uh, well, obviously the X Games, but uh, I'm not counting, not counting those. Those are kind of part of my life anyway, even before Microsoft. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are some good gems like uh, KSP was really fun. Um, Surviving Mars, I find, was very interesting. But you know, it's not like the ones that you go with or uh, dream about it, like Mist or yeah, Riven or stuff like that. 
from back in the day. Okay. I think it also may be due to the fact that we have so many games that it's hard for games to have this type of impact that, you know, games used to have when you, you played maybe one or two games a year or three. And now you play 20, maybe 30 games a year. Mm. So probably more related to that than to, to the games themselves. I mean, and in the end, it's always uh, majorly a matter of personal taste too, right? I mean, um, yeah, well, that's that as well. Me, me personally, I'm, I'm more the guy who, who prefers playing more games that are shorter rather than less games that are that are longer. Mm. But um, you know, it's I'm I'm pretty happy about the the wide selection that is there today, and it's becoming bigger and bigger, right? There are more and more games coming out every day, and um, it's sometimes hard for people to, or for these for these games to find their audience, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting time. Yes, it's, I I've, I feel for for these people that really struggle to you know get any attention, uh, right? Because it's the flood is sometimes really yeah it's it's hard and uh, yeah, but I guess with streaming and stuff like that, some some people have found ways to to get noticed. Um, but again, the, sometimes a game is nice to watch someone play, and then when you play it yourself, it's half as fun. Did you, did you have that experience? Well, I, I've, to be perfectly honest, I've never been a big fan of let's plays or live streams myself. Like um, that's that's not how I discover my next game. Okay. What I really like right now is so. First off, I'm a console player, right? What? I've, I've always been a console console uh, player. Let's end this podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I've I have played PC games, of course, in the past too. Like, but my PC gaming was very genre specific, so it would be stuff like Anno, the Anno series. Oh yes, or Anstoß, like those those old school German football management games and stuff like that. Yes. But uh, so generally, I'm more of a console player, and I'm really loving right now what what Microsoft is doing with the with the Xbox Game Pass, mm -hmm. where um. You have a subscription thing, right? And and coming back to the whole discovery topic, mm -hmm. I am playing so many games right now that I would probably have never played a couple of years ago because I had no idea that they were there. And um, these guys are being put into the Game Pass and, and um, get millions of people checking their game out, which is which is really neat. Yeah. Yes, I, I guess it also plays into the, you prefer shorter bursts of, of games. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, yeah. yeah, that plays a lot into that. But I mean, that's also a, a matter of, of taste, right? Some people right. really don't like any subscription, subscription models generally. And, and um, again, there's a wide variety of, of services and, and options there mm. for everybody. No, it's a good, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good, good system to, uh, that gives yeah, as you said, it gives exposure to games that maybe people would not otherwise have found. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's basically like the Netflix of, of Pretty of much, gaming, yeah. I guess. yeah. You know, you have these first-party games that stay in there, mm. but then the third-party stuff is being um, is, is, is on a rotation, basically, just like the, the stuff on Netflix. Mm. Um, but, yeah. Okay, now okay. that I've... Uh, this was probably our last chat ever, now that you've totally disrespect me because of my console history <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm going to get flack for that as well i know but anyway i know it's, it was a joke people get over oh, it I, I, i'm pretty <laughs> sure that uh, that most of the uh, x players will be on your side on that all <laughs> oh, right yes I, I have that okay we'll see in the comments <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right cat thanks for the chat and yeah. have a great rest of the week yeah thank you for having me and uh, yes uh, have a nice day as well I hope you enjoyed that chat with Ketra and I'd be very interested to see and read your feedback on adding some personal touches to the chats. Is that something you like or do you think it's out of place? Let us know in the comments and I'll see how we handle this in the future. Please subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app or find us on youtube.com slash egosoft where you can also like this episode and subscribe to our channel. Consider writing a review for X4 Foundations on Steam or GOG if you haven't already. It really does help. Thanks for tuning in and talk to you soon for the next episode of the Inside Egosoft podcast. This is Greg, signing off.